And there is a change of personnel in our studio as we welcome Stephen Fry, one of Snooker's greatest fans, alongside our six-time world champion, uh, Mr. Steve Davis. Stephen, I know that you spend a rather unhealthy amount of time watching this championship. <laughs> Approximately how much have you watched this time? Uh, only about 70%, I would say, this particular championship. <laughs> Usually it's 100%. And I haven't even had time to, to sort of come home and do, do it on, on iPlayer or anything because I've been so busy on three different things. But what I have watched has been fascinating. It's got more fascinating as the tournament's gone on sometimes. The best matches are quite early on and in the courses and the, uh, the semis were t terrific, of course. But um, this final has just proved it's a just... It will never be forgotten. I mean, you say that a lot. Right. I mean, last year's final was terrific for Ronnie, but it wasn't the most sensational match that was ever played here. Um, whereas this, whatever happens, will be. <laughs> well, you were here for that final last I was year, obviously, last year. and you're sitting out there, so close to the action, ten feet away. For for those who haven't been to the Crucible mm. and haven't experienced what it's like, can you describe <laughs> what it's like to be? You're so all close probably to very this? tired. Everybody who comes here saying what a glorious place <laughs> it is, and now it is, it is the simply the 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 omphalos, the navel stone of which is uh, has <laughs> never been used in the studio not? before. It I is say. the 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 <laughs> centre, the very centre of all things snooker for people who play here and people who come and watch here. It's partly, the, it's the intimacy. You feel it's like super HD, the, the clarity um, of vision you have of the players as they walk past you. You can hear them breathing, you can hear the little mutters, just as you can at home. So you get all that. You, you also get this extraordinary atmosphere from the crowd. You get the wonderfully mild susurration of William Dennis or JV. Um, um, uh, they're leaking on their earpieces as they <laughs> commentate. So you hear this, what are they saying? Because I haven't actually you don't heard them. I don't know. I like to lean forward and sort of watch and guess what they're saying. Um, but it's it's impossible uh, to describe. You have to come and book as early as you can. I appreciate a lot of you swearing at me and saying, and when did you book, Stephen? And, well, I was invited and, and I, I admit. Um, and, but I am, as Steve has said when the cameras are off, I am a snooker slut. And uh, I know the, the nicknames and so on. And I have done all the way back since, um, since the days of John Spencer and John Pullman and early Pot Black. Um, and it's, to me, an endlessly fascinating game. And it seems to be a game that never exhausts itself. It's sometimes called, and chess players will find it ridiculous, tabula chess, you know, chess yes. on a table. Chess is already on a table, but chess on bays. And of course, it's, it's in many ways very different from chess. But one thing that's similar is, is um, that there are times when people say the game is exhausted, that someone too good has come along and they've cracked it. That happened with Alakine, for example. Um, and uh, uh, People said that, you know, he was so perfect, no one would ever be better than him. And then along comes another player who, who can defeat him extraordinarily. And similarly here, you think, well, I've seen everything the game can give. And then you get a, an occasion like this, and you realize that it's, it's human-shaped. No one can master it technically in such a way that they will always win because there will always be something. And that's, that's what's so exciting. That's the endless fascination of it. And for you, Steve, having played it all of these yeah. years, really. Yes, clearly. and trying to judge what the crowd get from it mm. compared to a player. The players love playing, obviously, but what people that are not necessarily so strong players get from it, I think it's a slow burner. You, know, you get your reward. Yeah. from sitting through what could other people would think would be tedious. Yes. Then after a while it just erupts into these magical moments. You, you cannot buy that, really. No. No. Now, I know this man's got to get back out there very shortly because the players are due out uh, in a few moments, but I need to put you on the spot here. From the way you've been watching and from what you've seen, who will prevail and why? Well, it's very hard, it's very hard to say that Ronnie will win. I mean, of course, he is... As I heard John saying earlier, the greatest player to ever to pick up a cue, so one can't put it past him to win four in a row, um, and then everything's up for grabs. But, frankly, it just needs every two frames or so for uh, Mark to, to, to win a frame, and he gets closer and closer to 18, and then he's uh, got to win one when he's on 17. And he will take the most magnificent and extraordinary self-control on the part of Ronnie. And he looks slightly as if he's just too cross at the way Marcus played, which is the same response that Judd Trump had to the way that Neil played against him, that it's almost as if it's unfair to play a traditional snooker like this, but it isn't, it's part of the game. And it's brilliant if you play someone as good as Ronnie to, to force him into that corner. Okay, well we shall look off forward to... Off I go. To, yeah, well, Enjoy you better it, get off. Thank and uh, so we look much. forward to hearing Q. Thank you, and thank you for the session. job you do every single well, time. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Stephen, thank Thanks. you very much. Oh, Cheers. I'm staying my seat. <laughs> Well, they're coming back. Stephen is off. Get into his seat before we resume once again in frame 29.